painfully slow process. For over a decade, one man has been at the center of suspicion, and one woman has been hot on the trail, Mickey Thompson's sister. She has an impressive record of her own for getting things done. But while the victims in this case are all entitled to justice, a question looms. After all these years, are the authorities on the right track? Tonight, Bill Legatuta with a case he's been covering from the start, a case that begins where a legend lives. His name was Mickey Thompson, and in case you don't remember, there was a time when he was literally the fastest man on earth. A hot rod hero whose name became synonymous with race cars. How would you describe his personality? Stepping on the gas. He was always going hard. Anything he did, he did it full out just a very genuine person but then you turn around and put a helmet on and he was the man to beat what was a draw what was start this race tough as nails uh he had balls and he was just tough because he fought his way up what is your name please my name is mickey thompson mickey thompson was one of those genuine american legends like chuck yeager breaking the sound barrier john glenn orbiting the earth Mickey Thompson, too, would go on to make history. And the timing seemed just right. California in the 50s, where every boy with a dream dreamed of owning a set of fast wheels. As a kid, was he always interested in cars? Mickey's sister, Colleen. My very first recollection of Mickey was um, in the garage. He was taking my mother's gasoline washing machine engine apart. And I can remember asking the question what he was doing. And he was making himself a car. By the time he was 25, he was racing professionally. He'd go on to set 395 different speed records. He did make one stop along the way to get married. A former secretary at Hot Rod Magazine named Trudy Feller. Racing is a way of life for the family and you, you have to accept it. That's what they want to do and that's how you accept your life. Mickey was Trudy's man and Trudy was Mickey's woman. They had fun together, they laughed together, they were very serious together and they worked hard together. My dad, my hero, my mentor. Danny Thompson is Mickey's son. <sighs> he was a man. I mean, he. He was a great dad, you know, coach baseball, coach football, uh, still was out racing. Uh, like I said, he was, he was the man. But he was still one step away from the history books. That would all change on April 10th, 1960. This no man's land in the Utah desert called the Bonneville Salt Flats is where men pushed their machines to the limit. And on that day, the world watched in awe as Mickey Thompson climbed into a car he built from the ground up. This is a car that he took four Pontiac engines that he bought out of a junkyard, 32 fuel injectors, and bolted all that together. He put the pedal to the metal and drove his car, the Challenger 1, 406 miles an hour. An amazing feat and a world record. And it was a real big thing because here's a little hot rodder that uh, had really done something for the United States of America. What Mickey Thompson did in this place was go faster than any man had ever gone before without leaving the confines of the earth. The headlines proclaimed him the Speed King. 28 years later, with his racing business still going strong, Mickey Thompson would once again be front page news. Only this time, there would be no joy. It was March 16th, 1988. The light hadn't come yet to California's San Gabriel Mountains when Mickey and Trudy set out for work, as they always did, together at 6 a.m. And I got a phone call from one of my dad's employees. And he said, there's something's happened up at the Bradbury house, and we don't really know what it is, but, but something's happened. 
Danny grabbed his car keys and made a phone call to his Aunt Colleen. And I says, what is it, Danny? And he says, I don't know. I'm on my way up. I don't know what's happened. They just said there was gunshots up there. One of the neighbors, Lance Johnson, was startled out of bed. About 15 seconds went by with silence, and all of a sudden I heard Mickey Thompson, who was our next-door neighbor, who lived right over here, and he was screaming. I could see everything because these trees weren't here. These bushes weren't here. Allison Triarcy, 12 years old at the time, was looking out her bedroom window. Mostly what I remember seeing is Mickey being held right by that pine tree. A man was holding him there with a gun. And Mickey was on the ground looking down at his wife. I heard the gunshots and I heard this awful high-pitched screaming. Both of them shot, but both alive. I remember Mickey pleading with them. Please don't hurt my wife. Don't hurt my wife. Don't hurt my wife. My mom was right here, screaming at the top of her lungs. These guys didn't flinch. The killers picked up the wife's head, held the gun to it so he could see that. They didn't stop for a second. And then they shot her right in the head and killed her in front of his eyes. And then they killed him. Well, there was my dad laying there, and Trudy was laying there, and everybody milling around, and news helicopters flying all over the top of it and I mean I was in I was just I was in shock we uh, turn attention to today's top local story and that is the execution murder of the man known as the auto speed king everyone in the racing community expressed their shock and outrage no one more so than this man what are you doing Michael Goodwin Mickey Thompson's business partner it was just a tragedy and it I mean it was apparently an assassination you know, somebody shot them, so it wasn't an accidental death. Neighbors told police the killers were two black men who escaped from the hilltop area on bicycles. Police put out sketches of two hooded gunmen, but the shooters disappeared. The Thompson couple was gunned down five days ago in front of their home in Bradbury. There have been no arrests in the year since Mickey and Trudy Thompson were shot to death outside. An update now, it is two years to the day, and the murder of racing promoter Mickey Thompson and his wife is still unsolved. Fourteen years later, there were still no arrests. The brutal murder, coupled with Mickey Thompson's stature, led to a major investigation. But there were no fingerprints, no weapon was ever found. And that's what's most troubling to Mickey Thompson's family and friends, because they say they knew from the moment they heard about the murders who was behind them. My first thought was, Mickey was right. Mike Goodwin did kill him. Goodwin did it. Or he didn't have the stones to do it himself, but he had somebody do it. End of story. Ah, how about this, huh? Michael Goodwin, Mickey Thompson's partner. Did he get away with murder? Free to live the good life? That's next. It's been 14 years since the Thompson murders, and Michael Goodwin says he can't get away from them. Nothing I do now doesn't have a cloud over it wondering if it's going to be the last day I have freedom. Off the coast of California, below the waves, spear gun in his hand, Goodwin says he had nothing to do with his former partner's murder. He's just trying to live his life. Michael Goodwin used to have a beautiful wife named Diane and lots of money from a career as a rock promoter. Together, they were pursuing a life of luxury. Uh, we traveled a lot, diving, snow skiing. I had a fairy princess wife and we just did wonderful things together. But every time Mickey Thompson's sister, Colleen Campbell, saw Goodwin free and living the good life, she got angrier and angrier. When I see Mike Goodwin, I get sick to my stomach. Um, the guy's a, a jerk in my opinion. If I ever had a doubt whether he was guilty or not, I have no doubt anymore. Michael Goodwin's first relationship with Mickey Thompson was the same as millions of other daydreaming kids. Thompson was a hero, and Goodwin was a fan. I was into speed like a lot of kids are, and even though I didn't have any race cars at the time, I was into fast motorcycles, and Mickey was a legend at the time. In 1978, Mickey Thompson had an idea that would transform the racing world. Bring outdoor racing indoors. The one thing you didn't want to tell my dad is that you can't do that. 
Mickey Thompson's son Danny remembers his father's ambitious scheme. He said, I want to bring uh, 25 million pounds of dirt into your stadium. I want to run these pickup trucks up through your bleachers and back down. I want to jump them 70 feet back into the floor. Whoa, look at Ryan go for the air. By then, Michael Goodwin was busy staging the same kind of stadium road show, only with motorcycles. He called it Supercross. Bill Wilson, a retired cop, was the stadium manager. Michael uh, was a was, uh, highly competitive, uh, excitable individual. He was I can do anything kind of, a, of an attitude. And got things done. He got it done. Did you make a lot of money in Supercross? I did well. It was only a matter of time before Michael Goodwin and Mickey Thompson would go into business together. And it was all about the dirt. Each man was paying a fortune, hauling tons of dirt into the stadium for his own race. They decided, why not split the cost? Bring in one load of dirt, race motorbikes on it one night, and cars the next. So the two of you go into business together. Yes. What was that like? It was truly hell from the first day. Thompson felt the same way, according to his sister, Colleen Campbell. Mickey called me on the phone, and he said um, Goodwin had stolen $50,000 from him. And I said, what? And he says, Colleen, I think the guy's a crook. And after two or three months, we were getting phone calls like, hey, Mick, where's my money? Shirley Brown, Thompson's personal assistant and bookkeeper, says she soon began to get complaints from the company's outside contractors. And that was the first indicator Goodwin was running off with Mickey's money. Goodwin denies stealing any of the partnership's money and insists the problem was that Mickey Thompson just wouldn't live up to the deal. Although Mickey had signed an agreement to turn all the decisions over to me, that was not the case. He wanted to continue to run the show. He was a guy who was a stream of ideas. Phil Bartonetti was Mickey Thompson's friend and his lawyer. Did Mickey Thompson feel betrayed by his partner, Mike Goodwin? Betrayal would be part of it. What he felt more than, than that word would be, he felt that he was being taken advantage of. Thompson went to court claiming Goodwin had stolen hundreds of thousands of dollars straight out of their business. And Mickey won about a $514,000 judgment against me. Did you pay it? No, I did not. Instead, Goodwin declared bankruptcy and appealed the ruling. It would drag on through the legal system for two years before Goodwin's appeal was shot down. This whole thing was about winning and it looked like Mickey was winning. How do you stop him from winning? Thompson's family and friends say that's when Goodwin got ugly. Mickey called me on the phone and he says, Sis, I'm really concerned. And I says, what's the matter, Mick? And he says, I'm afraid Goodwin's going to hurt my baby, meaning Trudy. And uh, he says, uh, Sis, I'm telling you, the guy's capable of it and I feel it in my bones. It would be phone calls and Mickey would say, that goddamn Goodwin is at it again. And the death threats were, get off my back. Did you ever make any threats against Mickey Thompson? Absolutely not. They are fabricated. But Bill Wilson, who is also a retired cop, remembers differently. I uh, said, uh, how are things going, Mike? And he said, Thompson is just killing me. He's taking everything I've got. Uh, he says, I'm going to take him out. He said that to you? He said that to me. I'm going to take him out. I'm going to take him out. I did not tell Bill Wilson or anyone else I was going to take out Mickey Thompson. And I didn't. And I said, oh, come on, Mike. I said, nobody wins that way. I said, you know, he's dead and you're in prison. And he said, no, they won't catch me. I'm too smart for that. Two weeks later, Mickey and Trudy Thompson were shot dead in their driveway. The racing world was stunned. They'll be missed by a lot of people. Thompson's family was pained and confused. But to the former detective, it couldn't have been more clear. He still had his Rolex. She still had a big wedding ring on. 